Well, hey, Conrad, what a busy week, huh? It just seems like Palm Springs has come alive, beautiful weather, and we have a lot to talk about today. Um, Most definitely. I, Valentine's Day, President's Day weekend, all morphed into one. Um, I'm going, I went to a curated collection, which is a big event that happens twice a year for all you vintage fashion, fashionistas. And uh, Conrad, I know you just finished uh, Elton John's autobiography. That'll be exciting to hear about. And I think right. you've been whipping and cooking up a storm and <laughs> then popping over to Zoom with Melissa Morgan Fine Art and a incredible visit through her new outdoor sculpture garden. We have a we lot to everything? talk about. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's see. Uh, you want to start with some of what, what you've been doing? Sure. So let's go. I'm going to go ahead and jump really quickly to this uh, book that I read. Uh, you know, I've been reading books over, during this pandemic period. And my latest book is Me, Elton John. And, you know, what, cool. what I really enjoyed about his writing this book is that, first of all, I think we all know who he is, even though we don't, but we think we know who he is, especially since we saw the Rocket Man movie that was so successful. Well, he's been through a lot, yeah. Right, he has been through a lot. And I love when a writer is able to be outside of themselves and not be afraid to talk about things that may not be to the benefit of themselves. But he's really good about how, the way he writes. You can picture what he's talking about. You know where he's at. You know the people. Of course, he knows everybody. He's performed with a lot of people we know, a lot of people we don't know. He has great stories about when he first started all the way up to when when he, him and uh, David were having their kids. It's mm. just the, the way that he writes is personal. And I, I really enjoy that because I'm able to, to picture what he's saying. And one of the things I really like about just reading a book in general right now is with our cell phones, especially in this book, he says, I was on, a, let's just say David Letterman and I was really hung over and you, 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 you can tell it, but no one knew. You can go to your phone, David Letterman, Elton John, January, whatever. And there he is, you go, oh yeah, you do look like you were hung over. I'm going to take a quick break and then, I'm going to, and then I'm moving into, oops. A Promised Land. A Promised Land. Does it show there? I don't know if I could show yeah, that. I don't think not. it shows, but we know that that's Barack Obama's, you know, latest book. Yes, most definitely. And he's so a what about you, Claudia? Writer. What have you, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Yes. Well, the weekend was so, I felt like it just went, woo, you know, and of course today's still a holiday. So there might, there's a little bit more. I'm going to, uh, kind of get out to Palm, North Palm Canyon. Uh, Palm Springs, by the way, was packed. I don't know if that's good or that's bad, but it was nice to be out, eat out, uh, drink out. Uh, and the curated collection, this uh, curated collection comes in conjunction with Modernism Week twice a year. And we right. did cover a curated um, last, I think it was last October. Yeah, sometime. And of course, Modernism Week is still virtual. So you can go online, pick uh, home tours and talks and lectures and things that you want to see that's still ongoing. A curated collection is at Temple Isaiah, and it's actually a fundraiser for the temple put on by Mitchell Carp of Mitchell's Palm Springs, which is high-end vintage clothing um, on Indian Canyons and down downtown. They have some great clothing at this event. Oh my gosh, I, I, I have this Pucci dress, vintage dress I'm lusting after, but you know, fancy. <laughs> <laughs> and um, with the support of Mindy Sue King, who runs the vintage market, which is the first Sunday of every month. It was a vintage fast fashionista's delight. Uh, I saw a lot of my friends, a lot. It was so fun just to, see each other and you know everyone was looking their finest and mm -hmm. and actually and, and Claudia yeah I, I would I would say that because of course I, I didn't go to this event but I would say that there were definitely a lot more people during this period than there were uh, in October because October when I was there if you remember you were there also it was extremely hot at that it time it was so hot people were mm -hmm. melting right but there were a lot was, more people this time yeah this was nice and he had some refreshments and not only clothing, but furniture, but it just seemed like the creme de la creme. Their, their booths were very well merchandised. I highly recommend it uh, next time, you know. Um, yeah, it was, it was really made for a great day and it just kind of morphed into lunch after and drinks at 849 and chicken ranch lunch and all, you know, all the, basically everything was alive and kicking. So that was really, really fun. Yeah, well, it's, I think we all agree, it's great to finally be outside of our house. We're still 
pretty much staying in our home, but you know, we, we do venture out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And this is a good uh, segue that we can talk about the, uh, the uh, video that we're gonna show in just a few moments. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had an opportunity to go over to the Melissa Morgan Gallery uh, Garden Sculpture over there on El Paseo to take a look and see what's there. I've heard about it for quite some time. Um, let me tell you, what, what a unique outdoor sculpture garden that it is. What I really, one of the many things I enjoyed about it is that there's a lot of really large pieces of art in which you can go and be mm -hmm. a monk's and be and see them. And there's also several interactive pieces of art that you can be part of also. And if you get a chance, it's a great opportunity to get outside of your house, go over to El Paseo, maybe mm -hmm. do some shopping, maybe do some eating, and then put in some culture in, in your world also. It's called the well, Melissa and then, Morgan And then the gallery Garden. is open. The gallery is now open. And I know she, she's, she represents many, many name artists and sculptors yes. and bleeding edge. I mean, really great exhibits. So yes. have that whole experience. And then I guess she must have purchased the lot uh, behind her or something like that. Or is it well, part there, I think, yeah. I think this will be in, in, in uh, some of the video. And so we'll be able to talk about that. But what's what I, I do want to say before we get there is if you go today and then you go three weeks or later, it could be different. There's always different kinds of wow. sculptures that yeah. are that are sculptures that are coming through there. So it's kind of it's, it's a lot of fun. I think I recommend everyone get a chance to go out there and take a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look and show our viewers. Let's do it. It's official. The Coachella Valley has once again opened up during the pandemic, and that means that residents and visitors alike are ready to get outside and start enjoying some sunshine. And we here at Palm Springs Point of View want you to know about a sculpture garden in Palm Desert. Let's welcome our guest from the Melissa Morgan Fine Art Gallery in Palm Desert, Alec Blogmere. Hey, Alec, how are you doing? Doing great, thanks. How are you today? Just fine, thank you. Thank you for joining okay. us here. Sure, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So it's my understanding there is a sculpture garden going on over in your area. Yeah, it's one of those um, fortuitous things that happened to us about a year and a half ago when we moved buildings. We had actually uh, moved out of the building that we had leased for about 10 years and, and found a great spot in the middle of the El Paseo, just across from the gardens, uh, and the building was for sale. So we bought it and didn't really give any forethought into all of the huge sculpture that we actually tend to display. And of course, there's no sculpture garden attached to this building because they're right on El Paseo. Uh, but we were having a drink with a friend um, up at a club, and he said, he sort of turned over to us and he said, hey, I heard you bought that cool building down the street from my property. And he goes, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little ways away from developing all of this stuff, but there's a big chunk of land where the old Union Bank stood. I don't know if you remember this, it burned down a few years ago. And I was, I was wondering what was there before. Yeah, it was the Union Bank that, that had burned down. And uh, so it sat as an empty lot for a number of years. And this, this fellow who was developing it, uh, bought it a, a couple of years ago. And he said, hey, why don't you make it real pretty? And uh, we'll make a little deal on it. And I said, sure, sounds good. So we, um, so we, <laughs> so we, so we uh, put some gravel down and, uh, and, and some landscaping and we, we started placing sculpture in it. Um, it's, it's amazing but, what can be accomplished. It's amazing what can be accomplished over a, a beverage. I find that quite often in our business, a lot of deals are accomplished <laughs> that way and, uh, and, and many people benefit. So it was, it was great. So why don't you tell us first, where is the sculpture garden located? So, so it's it's actually um, about a block away from the gallery itself, across the street uh, on San Luis Rey and El Paseo. On El Paseo, uh, the address, which I you know I never look at, but I've, I've got right here, uh, the address is actually, if you're googling this, seven three seven eight five El Paseo. El Paseo, Bombay. and it is literally right on El Paseo. Yeah, it is. It's right. it's it's right on El Paseo on the main street. Uh, and because of that, it's not a building. Because of that is the and, and it's open to the street so there is no uh buying a ticket there's no waiting in line anyone can just walk up day or night yeah it's 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 open 24 7 um it, it's lit it's well lit uh it's public access and uh and the sculpture is meant to be there for everybody so there, there are no tickets it's uh, it's free access well that's good and you know i went the other day or about a week or so before when we were still in the shutdown because i just needed to get out of the house so yeah. I, was, I thought I'd drive over there and I parked actually very easily in front of the uh, the garden on El Paseo and just sat in my car and kind of looked from a distance and I felt much pleasure from it. And then right. I realized that there was a, a nice size parking a lot next door 
So I went there and looked from that side. And then I realized the only person in the sculpture garden had left. So I thought, well, I, I'm, I'm free to go. It's, it's all mine sure. now. And That's I got right. out with my mask on and walked around and I felt very comfortable being there. Yeah, well, it's nice. I mean, it's it's one of those rare sort of things in you know, during a pandemic. I mean, honestly, it, it was probably one of uh, the most successful things to happen for us during the pandemic. We sold a number of sculptures right out of it. You know, people wanted to get out and enjoy culture, but most culture, at least visual culture, um, is typically indoors. You know, museums right. and galleries and uh, whatnot. So, so, so having an outdoor sculpture garden is is a real plus that way. And being able to sell some of the sculptures, that was one of my questions to you. Uh, mm -hmm. This is not just a look and then walk away. If you find something of interest and your yeah. wallet is uh, itching to let something go, yeah. uh, you can actually purchase some of these. A absolutely. Every, every piece of sculpture, just about every piece of sculpture uh, in there is for sale, other than the interactive art. Uh, there's, there are a couple of interactive art pieces that are permanent to the sculpture garden. Yes. And let's, let me ask you this question first, and I want to talk about some of the interactive art. Sure. How many pieces of sculpture are there? Yeah, right now they're about uh, 10 pieces, uh, but it rotates. You know, the pieces, this is one thing. If you if you visit it one month, it's it's very likely that it's going to switch by the next month. You'll have a couple ah. of pieces come in and out. So typically it varies, you know, from eight to 12 pieces. All right. And so let's go ahead and talk about uh, some of the interactive art, because and, and, I, and I want that I want that discussion for two reasons. Uh, when I was there, I just thought it was cool that you can actually interact with art and with the sculptures and in the in the garden. And I'm a type of person when I go to, especially a museum, I'm not much of a museum person because I get a little bit bored. But if there's some kind of interaction there that I can do with the art that I'm looking at or with, with the pieces that are there, I feel more involved. And yeah. so I believe there are two pieces of art. One is the flag and then right. one is a big board on the back wall. Tell me about the big board on the back wall first. So both both are created by, the, in, the, in this scenario, both are created by the same artist. Okay. Uh, his name is Freddie Bosch and it was a project of his called uh, Us of Love, um, which is sort of a play on US of love and kind of really meant to be sort of affirming messages during difficult times. It was originally inspired um, by a project that he had at put together with first responders in New York City oh. after 9-11 and, uh, and wanted to share positive messages with those first responders. So the whole idea of, of kind of um, almost street art uh, yeah. in, in, in the case of the first project, uh, there's a spray painted and of course he left these blank lines for people to, to fill in encouraging messages of love. Uh, and that translated over over the years into sort of a more general kind of messages of of love love letters, if you will, uh, that you share amongst uh, your loved ones and 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 people you don't know as well. So it's been an incredible kind of thing to watch develop over the last five six months or so. You know, we regularly go out there and take pictures. In fact, we encourage people who use the board uh, to to go to hashtag us of love. Uh, or Melissa Morgan Fine Art on Instagram and post pictures of what they've written up on on the uh, on the chalkboard. Yeah. All right, and so the the person who did this uh, interactive uh, sculpture, this artist, mm -hmm. you mentioned there are how many pieces, how many sculptures currently there now? So in the sculpture garden itself, or of it in, in the, the sculpture, sculpture garden, garden itself, there are about ten of them. Uh, ten. Two of the pieces, the the interactive artist, uh, are the are the two chalkboards, the American and flag piece, and then the Us of Love board with uh, with the messages. And the, the 10 individuals that have sculptures there, yeah. are they local artists or are they international artists? Artists from all over the world. You know, we represent uh, artists from, from just about every continent. Uh, and, uh, and so they're really international artists who also exhibit uh, internationally in museums and other galleries and public settings as well. And in fact, there's a link to the sculpture garden on Melissa Morgan Fine Art that has a virtual tour of the sculpture yes. garden if you're not uh, if you're not interested in going to the garden itself at first, or in fact, uh, if you've got your phone on you and you want to know a little bit more about the artwork that's displayed there, you can bring up the virtual tour of the sculpture garden while you're on site. That's good. So that, that's, that was going to be my next question. So you don't have to have you on site to walk us around. A person can just go walk and look because there are little signs that tell you who the artist is, but you can also do this uh, virtual guide. Correct, and, and in fact, I believe the signs all, I have to check to see, but I think the, the signs all now have SKU codes that you can scan with your, with your photo, uh, the, the, the photo app on your phone. Uh, that'll bring up more information about each of the artists as well. So there's so many terrific uh, pieces, of, uh, pieces of art is what I would call them there, sculptures that are there. But let's talk about something that just caught my eye the, the minute I walked on, the minute I was sitting in my car, and that is the huge horse that is right. there. Peter Busby, um, a wonderful sculptor. Um, 
works primarily in steel. And the first time I saw his work was was actually um, it's actually in, uh, I think it was in San Diego where I first saw him. He had uh, uh, basically what looked like the the tail section of whales, you know, coming out of the water. And they were just sort of set in the grass by, by the ocean. And they just struck me, they're, they're so beautiful. But I thought to myself, the whales in the desert would be a little strange. So we called Peter <laughs> up in the studio and said, uh, hey man, do you have anything that isn't sort of water animal? <laughs> do you have anything that isn't a whale or a shark? And it's you know, these great horses. And I think hey, that's a little more appropriate for the desert. So so he, uh, he shipped us this, you know, enormous 15 foot, 12 foot, 12 foot, I guess, at the, at, at the hips uh, horse, and, and that's where it lives now. It's a fun, it's a fun little excursion there. Of yeah. course, if you're walking down uh, Alpaseo, you can do your, your shopping and then come down here and look at some sculpture. It'll get a little eats and culture all, all at the same time. Perfect. So uh, in closing, I want to ask you, is there a theme that you were going for in all of these sculptures, or is it just you get to go in there and, and feel and experience as you feel and experience? Well, you know, I think that um, I, I think there was definitely a theme that was building throughout the pandemic. I think that most of the artists that rep are represented, at least now, in the sculpture garden, all have, um, uh, in their own way, a uniform message of hope in their work. And, you know, you can look at, like, the big infinity piece. I don't know if you saw that. Yes. The, the large glass and steel sculpture by Anthony James in the center of it. Um, you know, his, his pieces literally speak to the infinite possibilities within us which is such a, an uplifting kind of a message. And um, I, I think that just, you know, artists are so affected by the times and they're really communicators uh, in a way of the times that like poets and writers and musicians are. Uh, so, so definitely when we were, I don't know whether it's conscious or subconscious, definitely when we were curating or putting together this collection of work, we were looking for sort of hopeful, positive works that you know, hopefully bring a little bit of light in a, in a, in a harder time. Yeah, and it feel it feels good to be there because it's a nice right. open space. It's something yeah. different, and I love walking amongst things rather than yeah. just looking at things. It's great. It's great to be able to get around them and 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 sort of feel their presence for sure. Right. Exactly. So it's been open for a while. Uh, how how much longer does it run, or is this an We've ongoing? Got it for a few more years. I mean, you know, I think the plan is is that eventually, when uh, the fellow who owns the property does develop it, we're going to integrate the sculpture prop uh, the sculpture garden into his development. So uh -huh. hopefully hopefully a lifetime and then some. Well, that sounds great. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And yeah. to all of our visitors, Al Paseo, there's a, there's a sculpture garden there. Yeah, Come by sure and Yeah, and, and free to the public, of course, bring your kids, it's fun stuff. Sounds good. Thank you much, Alec. Thank you so much. All right, bye-bye. Wow, Conrad, that is beautiful. I yeah. can't wait to go down and just sort of meander through it and take it all in. And yeah, I, I love I love going to a sculpture garden or anything in a museum like that where you get to do a lot of interaction. And this is definitely one of those. Oh yeah, and it's outside. And just, and being outside, exactly. <laughs> so, wow, wow, what a what a great week, huh? All right, Claudia, I'll see you next week. On. All right, see you next week, Conrad.